Okay, so um, we were we were lucky. Um, hopefully, you can see that on the on the screen. Yeah, so um, we were lucky to receive a a, a clear grant uh, as as well. Uh, and what we applied for was to develop um, some virtual inquiry based uh, organic uh, chemistry experiments uh, to help us uh, deliver these. Uh, well, deliver inquiry-based experiments uh, during COVID, but also thinking uh, beyond that uh, as, as well. Uh, and so um, if you want to access the resources your, yourself, uh, what you can do is, is sort of uh, scan uh, the QR code that, that's on the uh, slide uh, and, and also uh, all um, in the chat, I think I posted a link uh, to, the, uh, to the resources uh, as well. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, just sort of uh, explain our sort of rationale behind why uh, we wanted to create these virtual experiments um, uh, and uh, then to give an overview of, of, of what they entail uh, before uh, talking about how we sort of delivered uh, and, and the outcomes uh, of these experiments uh, with our students, which is only quite recently, it was just, just in March uh, this year. Um, so I, th I think Alex uh, has provided a very good uh, overview uh, uh, as to why you know it's important to incorporate inquiry uh, in, into uh, the uh, laboratory experience. Um, we use in inquiry-based uh, experiments to help our students transition from performing cookbook experiments uh, to, to performing uh, research. And, and particularly with the organic experiments, uh, what we're trying to get, get the students to do is to connect the, the theory of the experiments, like the mechanisms, uh, for example, to the to the observation, uh, like like what the flasks sort of looks like, uh, and and to the data, so things like reaction uh, TLCs, uh, for example. So what the students have to do is so they've got to hypothesize, they've got to predict, uh, and they've got to uh, sort of problem solve. So things like you know using the TLC to work out if the reaction is, is working or not, or if byproducts are, are forming, uh, for, for example, uh, deciding uh, what purification uh, processes to use or, or deciding if they need to adapt or modify uh, the experiments to, to get them to work. Uh, and so um, a similar situation to, to kind of what Stephen just outlined, you know, with COVID, we had to run a sort of reduced uh, labs with our students. And so we had to think about what experiments uh, we would have to uh, sort of transfer uh, and, and, and deliver online uh, and what we actually thought was if we um, if we could uh, create a simulated version of these uh, inquiry-based experiments we could uh, engage the students in these sort of cognitive and, and we could engage the students in these sorts of cognitive processes in, in, in the same way that they would do with the hands-on experiments we, we would still be able to teach some of the core skills uh, that we were trying to teach uh, if we did so in a hands-on experiment so so we applied for this uh, for, for the for the grant and we're very lucky and very grateful uh, to 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 receive that um, so what i'm now going to do is, tr is try and share uh, the simulation itself okay so um, we created this on um google sites so we did this so it would be open access free free to access to for educators and, and students and it would work uh, on all sorts of devices. Um, it's all web-based, so uh, students don't uh, have to sort of download any, any software uh, to, to, to use them. Uh, and the idea is that we've got a set of experiments here uh, and the students can kind of work through them uh, and replicate those kind of decision-making processes that they would have to uh, with, with the uh, hands-on inquiry experiments. So if I choose one of the experiments, uh, such as the Aldol experiment, here we've got the, the, the reaction scheme about what's happening uh, in, in this reaction. Students should come armed uh, with an idea of the mechanism of the reaction, how, how it's going to work. Uh, and when they start, uh, what the students see, get is a sort of procedure of the start of the experiment. Uh, and then they get a, an observational data, so what the flask uh, sort of looks like. Uh, and uh, sort of their TLC data. So for here, uh, using both of these pieces of information, they can connect it to the theory uh, to work out if the reaction is working, or if it's not working, or if they need to media to form a byproduct, uh, for example. Uh, and then further down the uh, page, the students can then choose what they want to uh, do next, what pathway they want to take uh, for, for the um, remaining steps. Uh, of the reaction. If they want to stop and purify the reaction, they can choose uh, one of those options and, and the reaction will follow through 
uh, with that with the procedure of the workup here, for example, the sample uh, with is the observation, uh, and then the data here uh, is, is is the NMR of that particular sample. So kind of work out what would happen if they followed that pathway. Um, or alternatively, if they decide to modify the reaction, so maybe stir the reaction for a bit longer, the observation of the reaction will change. Now a precipitate is forming here, for example, and the TLC. Uh, also uh, changes as, as a result. Uh, and so these kind of things do, do sort of mimic somewhat uh, what happens with these experiments when they, they're actually performed in the lab. So the students are kind of uh, seeing sort of similar examples of the reactions and the TLC data that they would do had, had they had done the hands-on experiments. Now, a key part of what we were trying to get the students to do uh, when they're performing these uh, experiments is to kind of submit these forms as they're going along uh, through these experiments. So uh, the key parts uh, of these forms are, are where they indicate what, what steps uh, they are uh, under, undertake, which page they're on and which stage they're at for the experiments themselves. Um, but also what we have here are kind of open text uh, sort of uh, parts of the, of the forms as well, where we want the students to really sort of explain uh, what they think is happening in the experiments. So connecting the theory, the data uh, and the observation and to together hypothesize what's going on with these experiments. Uh, and then there's also uh, uh, another open text response where they, we want them to, again, use those same processes to predict uh, why they've chosen their next steps and what they think will happen uh, as a result of their steps, choosing these steps as, as, as well. Okay, again, uh, the idea is to get them to kind of, uh, again, be thinking, connecting the theory uh, to what they're performing uh, with these experiments. Okay, so that's kind of uh, my, uh, part of the talk, sort of giving the rationale and the overview. Um, we'll now pass over to uh, Namra, who, who will talk about uh, the delivery uh, and the outcomes. Thank you, Nimesh. Um, uh, you'll, yeah, I'll just wait for you to stop showing your screen so I can show. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can't, yeah thank you. <laughs> um, sorry, just bear with me. So hopefully you can all see that. Yeah, you can see that. Great. Okay. So in terms of how we delivered the experiment, so the students were allocated two days to complete the whole experiment and that was sufficient for them. So we, myself and Anesh, um, facilitated the workshop first. And so two hours, we introduced the experiment and then we did some preparation. Um, she's really going to be easier, there we go. Um, and, and prior to this, the students were actually assigned which experiment they were going to be doing. So one of the four experiments and they had um, Microsoft Teams channels, which they could go into um, and work with other students on the same experiments in their preparation. So after the workshop that we did with them, the students were kind of free to go off and start the experiment. And myself and Nimesh um, were online to provide support. So we were sort of virtually lab demonstrating and the students were able to sort of drop in um, to the, like, the sessions and speak to us if they needed any help. So in the uh, workshops, we got the students to think about the mechanism of their reactions. We pulled up like the whiteboard for the students to collaborate on. Um, and all the students were sort of working together, which was quite nice. And myself and the measure sort of going around and um, seeing how the students were getting on. And we got them to think about things like the proton model, what it might look like, the TLC, what sort of things to expect, um, solubility with the different sort of species within the reactions and um, possible products and things like that. So they were starting to think about what they might anticipate in their investigations. So then we set the students off to go and do their experiments. And as Nimesh showed you, they had to fill in the Google Forms. So then we had to look at the student responses um, from those Google Forms. So we collated the responses from the students and we could get it in an Excel sheet like this. So you can see the students would select which experiment they were doing. Then they would state which step of the reaction they were at and then what procedure they assigned to that step. And then um, we could see uh, their explanations for what was happening. Um, and then they had to decide what they were going to do next and then the prediction for that as well. And this is basically what we were marking um, to give them a grade for this work. So just, just an example of a student response. So they selected step one is stirring at room temperature, step two is a filtration, and step three is a workup. And you can see um, their responses here. So they're sort of starting to think about observation, data, and theory. You can see bits of that coming through, um, and sort of I've highlighted it in, in the different colours there. Um, and this is basically, yeah, this is basically what we were assessing. So, what did the students think? So, I wanted to find out what was the priority of the experiment. 
So I designed this survey um, and sent it out to the students to complete after the experiment. And I just, I've just selected a few of the questions just, just to show you. And um, so I asked the students to rank the following from what was the highest priority to what was the lowest priority for the experiment. And these were the, this is what they were ranking. Um, so this is actually quite an interesting one. So um, the highest ranking uh, item was given the correct explanation and prediction, um, followed closely by sort of understanding the theory, whereas the lowest um, priority for them was actually getting the high yield. And this is completely opposite to what you see in the actual practical teaching labs, where getting a high yield is quite high priority for students. So this is quite an interesting um, situation. I also asked the students, did it actually feel like an experiment in the lab? So was it a sufficient replacement? And quite interestingly, um, there was almost a 50-50 split with this one. And when you look at the comments, they um, highlighted things like, no, it wasn't the same because there wasn't that same time pressure. But actually, that's actually quite a positive thing. You could, you could sort of interpret that. That's a good thing that we didn't feel that element of pressure. And then comments surrounding sort of the yeses were, were about being able to understand the theory um, and have more of an insight into what it's like to plan an experiment. And a common comment that kept coming up um, in this uh, question was that the students thought it'd be a very good, useful like pre-lab tool for experiments or something in addition to the actual lab experiments, which I think and Stephen mentioned as well. And then just another question I thought I'd ask the students was, uh, what did you learn from the experiment? And I made this word cloud um, from the student comments and you can see um, the key words that came up again and again was theory and thinking and understanding, uh, mechanism learning, TLC. So we can see that um, this is the kind of thing we were wanting students to think about and we seem to sort of be hitting that as well with this experiment. Um, and just, yeah, the students sort of pointed out that they were using mechanisms to predict the action progress, the importance of understanding what's going to be each step, analyzing data, and thinking beyond the lab manual instructions. So while there are some pros and cons overall, um, it seems to have been very positively received um, in this experiment. So that's it from me. I'll hand back to you, Nash. I'm on mute. So just, I think the, the final slide, sorry, Namra, if you want to stop. I need to stop, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, to think about. No, it's all right. Um, it was just to, to share the uh, final uh, slide, just to kind of summarise uh, that we developed a, a set of virtually uh, inquiry-based organic experiments. So we, we were able to deliver them successfully uh, on, on, online. Uh, and and we, we've got some evidence that the students are, are, are learning some of the desired skills. I mean, I do want to stress that we are we are actually still working our way through what the students actually produced and responses, because uh, it was only just uh, like, sort of like a month ago <laughs> that the students did this um, uh, experiment. Um, uh, and uh, in, in terms of the acknowledgements, again, just want to re-thank re the uh, Clare Committee uh, and uh, Learning Science uh, for funding uh, this, this, this project. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, both of you. That was that was really, really good. Um, lots of lots of comments in the chat. Um, one that um, came up, which was which was popular about the uh, resource that you developed. Are the students um, committed to a path as they go? Or, like, can they change their mind as they go through? Uh, you go. Yeah, you go. You go for it. <laughs> are you sure. Okay. Um, so. No, that 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 well, that they're not committed uh, to to a path. I think um, what we found, I think, because we get the times of when the students submit their forms, rather than them submitting them, you know, over a long period of time, they seem to all submit them very very quickly uh, together. So it would kind of indicate that perhaps what the students were probably doing was probably working their way through the various different pathways working out which one would be the the one towards the you know the the right product and, and then you know obviously thinking then about what you know how, how to fill in the forms and then boom 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 uh, submit them all together and i think i did manage to catch a comment i think by by rene who he's, he developed something similar a choose your own adventure style thing i think also said a, you know it might have said that you know that, that their students were doing something similar uh, with a twine uh, activity as well so i think yeah not not too dissimilar uh, to that Great, thank you so much for your for your talks. That was really great. Thank you.